Alright, so when we introduce separation of variables, what we've been looking at is only homogeneous PDEs uh, along with some homogeneous conditions with them. But how do we go about dealing with problems that have non-homogeneities? So um, from the start we've said separation of variables applies to linear homogeneous PDEs and linear homogeneous boundary and or initial conditions. So as soon as non-homogeneities arise, we fall into problems with the separation principle. Separation alone will fail. Now, if you, if you can't see this immediately, let's just have a, a quick look at an example. Let's consider the example uh, d2y dt squared is c squared d2y dx squared, so the wave equation uh, with uh, gravity as well, so plus g. So that's our non-homogeneity there. And this has uh, all homogeneous uh, conditions here and a, a non-homogeneous initial condition. So it's not that initial condition I'm worried about, it's this plus g in the PDE making the PDE itself non-homogeneous. So what you'll find is if you try to set y equal to x, of, uh, x times t, the usual separation approach, substituting that into the PDE will lead you to xt prime prime plus c squared x prime prime t as normal plus a g on the end. And that's the problem you can't actually separate this, uh, you can't divide by x, divide by t like we normally do, it's not possible to separate that into uh, all x's equal to all t's. So it just gets worse if you've got other non-homogeneities as well. So what do we do? Well, there's a couple of methods that we'll talk about here uh, for dealing with this sort of issue. So the first one that I'm going to talk about is where we have uh, time independent non-homogeneity. So the example I'll go through in this video is about time independent non-homogeneity. So something like a plus G like we just saw. And what we do there is we, we use a, a static solution as well as a separation of the PDE. So we're gonna break it into two problems. Uh, in another video, I'm gonna show you an example where we look at time dependent non-homogeneity. So that might be where you have a, a forcing, time dependent forcing function or something like that, uh, messing you up from separating. When that's the case, we use uh, what's called eigenfunction expansion, but that's for another video. Uh, in that one, I'll come back to this slide and go through it again. Okay, so for now, we're going to look at a time-independent non-homogeneity. It's the one we just, we just introduced as our example. So it's the wave equation subject to gravity, uh, and we've got uh, zeros on the boundary, so it's being held fixed. Uh, string, for example, being held fixed at zero, and we've got some initial distribution or shape of the string, and initially a zero velocity. So we've got those. Uh, there for us. Now, um, like I've said, we can't just go through and go y equals x times t and sub it in. It won't work. What we're going to do is use a substitution to replace uh, y with uh, z and psi. So z of xt plus a psi. So the idea here is that by breaking it into this um, two-part solution, we're, we're peeling off uh, psi of x, which is actually the solution to the corresponding static deflection problem. Okay, so that's it's kind of like the steady state version of this wave equation. So in this case, that static deflection problem is well, it's just the the equation up here with um, uh, zero time der uh, zero for the time derivative. Okay, so we've got zero is c squared d2 psi dx squared plus g on zero to l. And um, of course, if y is zero and uh, at zero and l, then so too will psi of x, uh, psi of zero and psi of l will also be zero. So we've got this ODE problem to solve first of all for psi, and then we'll come back and deal with the z of xt problem in a moment. Okay, so uh, that, that ODE can be fairly easily solved just by uh, rearranging and then integrating a couple of times with respect to x. And you get a quadratic solution, psi of x is this, Using the two boundary conditions right here, we can get the b is zero and we get a constant for a, and we can sub that in and we get our static deflection psi of x is gx over 2c squared times l minus x. So it's, it's just an ODE problem. It's actually probably a first year ODE problem because you're just integrating. It's not even using any techniques. So now we've got part of the solution y. Remember y is z plus psi. We've figured out psi. Um, if you think about it, you could rearrange that and say that z is equal to y minus psi, but we'll use that in a minute. So we sub y equal to uh, z plus psi into the PDE itself, 
Okay, and we'll get d2z dt squared because there's no t derivatives for psi. On the right hand side, they both have x derivatives, so that stays there, times c squared, and plus g. Now, we can actually do a little bit of cancelling there, and that's all because, if you remember, the ODE for psi was c squared d2 psi dx squared plus g is equal to zero. Well, we've got those two terms there and there, so that combination is equal to zero, so it's gone. So we're left with d2z dt squared is equal to c squared d2z dx squared. Nothing else. So that itself is now a homogeneous PDE for z of xt. Okay, so that's the important point here. We started off with a non-homogeneous PDE. We've dealt with that non-homogeneity by looking at the static deflection problem, introducing this psi of x. We've solved for psi of x, there it is. And now the bit left over to solve for z itself satisfies a homogeneous PDE. Okay, so we can go about solving that with our regular uh, separation. Um, z equal to capital X times capital T, or something like that. Okay, so that's our PDE now that we're solving. And we have to be a little bit careful at the boundaries. Remember I said that uh, u is equal to, oh, sorry, y in this case. y is z plus psi. So that means that z is equal to y minus psi. So we can use this relationship to get us the boundary and initial conditions for z. So z at x equals 0 is y at x equals 0 minus psi at x equals 0. Well, those are both 0, so z is 0. Same at x equals l. Okay, then uh, initially z of x naught is going to be y initially take away psi of x. So it's the initial condition, f of x, given in the question. Uh, there it is. Okay, so we'll use that and our psi of x. In a minute, we'll actually substitute in what psi of x is. Uh, we've also got the other initial condition. Uh, psi of x won't play any role here because we're time differentiating, uh, so it's just zero. So we've got this new PDE problem to solve for z. And we'll do it with our regular uh, separation. Let z equal to x times t. Sub that into the z PDE. The z PDE, not the y one. And you get something that is separable. Okay, something we're very used to seeing. x t prime prime equals c squared x prime prime t. Rearrange it by dividing by x and t. And you get the separated form. So all the t's, all the x's. And as we know, because we've already done this problem, uh, the, the wave equation and with zero boundaries, okay, we know that we need to set our uh, constant there to be a negative value, so minus lambda squared here. Okay, if you're not sure about that, just go through and check the possibilities. You know, alpha less than zero, alpha equal to zero, and alpha greater than zero. And you'll find it must be negative in this case. So our ODE system then is, as we've seen before, second order for x and a second order for t. Uh, with uh, lambda squared, we're going to get x must be a cos sine combination. These particular boundary conditions tell us a is 0 and b. We don't want that to be 0 because we wouldn't be able to satisfy our initial condition. So we set lambda to be n pi over l to make the sine part 0, which gives us our x of x solution, b sine n pi x over l. All right, solving the T equation, the T ODE, also gives us a cos sine solution with slightly different argument because the uh, coefficient here was slightly different, had the C squared in it. Uh, the only condition we've got there is T dashed at zero is zero, which gives us D is zero and leaves us with T equal to a constant times a cosine. So putting that together, putting the X and the T together, the separated solutions to the Z PDE, just the Z PDE, uh, given by z equal to x times t, which is, I'm going to use this uh, new constant b, but it's just um, this c multiplied by this capital B. So little b, arbitrary constants, sine and cos, that's the x and the t solutions, uh, for any integer n, an arbitrary b. Okay, now we, we can sort of skip, get to the chase here and say we know that we can't satisfy our initial condition that's this one here, f of x minus psi of x. We can't satisfy that with this kind of sine cos solution, or it would be a sine solution initially. 
So we need to superpose infinitely many of these separated solutions. So we come up with this infinite sum bn sine cos. And then the initial condition z equal to f of x minus psi of x is going to be, well, bring in the form for psi of x here because we know it, we might as well. And that means we require that the sum of bn times sine m pi x over l, that's just the solution we've just found at t equals zero, that must be equal to, well, that initial uh, distribution, f of x minus psi of x. So what we've got to do is we must set those bn's inside there, they must be the coefficients of the Fourier sine series, okay, of the odd, sine series, odd, periodic extension of this, z of x zero, to a 2L periodic function. Okay, so that's just saying what we're doing. Here is writing it down, the, the mathematical form for bn. That's just the, the um, Fourier sine series coefficient uh, formula, where that's the function we're having the Fourier series for. Okay, so we've got everything now. We've got psi of x, we've got z of x and t. We can put them together. Remember that the solution of the original PDE, y, is z plus psi. So there we have our z, there we have our psi, and I've just left the bn as defined down here by the, the Fourier coefficient equation. You can plug that in if you like. It looks pretty ugly and it takes up a lot of space, so it's perfectly fine to write it in that way. Okay, so there we go. Remember that this was dealing with a non-homogeneity, plus g, which was time-independent. Okay, time-independent non-homogeneities. We use separation on a reduced PDE and a static solution. So that's an example of that one. Uh, make sure you check out the other video where I look at time-dependent non-homogeneities and we use the eigenfunction expansion.